But would you have a, a, a few words to say on uh, tomorrow? Tomorrow is one year, the invasion of Ukraine. I, I remember you stating last year in our interview, well, negotiations are off the, off the table because the United States doesn't want negotiation. Would you still stand by that point of view? Yes, very much. Slightly attenuated now. There are voices saying, we just can't go on like this, including the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. He doesn't get demonized and vilified. Anybody else who says it does. But uh, General Milley did say something like that. Uh, but it's the same. Take a look at this morning's newspapers, uh, the anniversary of the uh, invasion. The Washington Post, the New York Times, two major newspapers. Take a look at the lead story in each of them. First story, pretty much the same. They both talk about the strange problem that the United States has in trying to get the world to understand that they ought to join us in our policy of continuing the war in order to weaken Russia. They say it doesn't seem to be working. Uh, all these countries of Latin America, Africa, Asia, they keep talking about negotiations and trying to end the horror. What's the matter with them? Uh, it was an interesting uh, conference in Munich a couple of days ago, the Munich Strategic Conference. It's very interesting. Same theme. Uh, Kamala Harris, the US Vice President, was there and she uh, delegates from all over the world uh, said uh, uh, no one in the world is almost a close, very close paraphrase. No one in the world is safe if a country can invade another in violation of law. I mean, in Latin America, Africa and Asia could barely control their ridicule, collapsing in ridicule. The United States is saying that. Uh, then there are sober delegates, a professor from Germany and other major figures who say, somehow we have to change our narrative. We're not getting it across to them. All of these backward people in the global South don't understand our position. There must be something wrong with our narrative. Could there be something wrong with the facts? inconceivable in the West, not if you're a distinguished uh, Western intellectual. If you're a distinguished intellectual, you shine the shoes of the powerful. The US government has a position for their own reasons. German, most European elites support it, their own reasons. So it must be holy writ. We must continue to war to severely weaken Russia, if that means destroying Ukraine, uh, moving on to the threat of nuclear war, well, what happens? That doesn't matter. This is important. And we do it, we have to defend the democracy against autocracy. I mean, how do you expect people in the world to listen to this and literally not collapse in ridicule? I mean, it's astonishing. What's particularly interesting now is that European elites are going along with it. Not so much the population, but elite opinion mimics the United States pretty much the way in the Eastern European satellites uh, during the communist period, communist intellectuals mimic Moscow. It's pretty similar. And uh, we're thinking about, because it's done without force, without threats, just willing voluntary subordination to power. So in answer to your question, yes, that's the position. It's understood, it's recognized, and the world is condemned for their inability to understand the nobility of our cause. 